Hi folks, this is Evan from Stock Music Musician, and in this video I want to teach you how to export stems in Logic Pro. Now, the meaning of stems is pretty complicated, and I've done a whole like 10 minute video breaking it down into the various things because everybody and their grandmother has a different definition of what stems means. So I'm going to, in this video, show you the three most common types of stems I have to export for music licensing, for streaming, for mastering engineers, that sort of thing. In my experience, these are the things you're gonna use the most. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of practically run you through how you can do each of them. If you wanna get into music licensing, I've got a free five-day music licensing crash course. These are gonna show you some of the technique on shows like The Real Housewives, stream millions of times, and a bunch of other fun stuff. So check that out. And now let's learn how to export stems in Logic. A key thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you have the right portion of the song selected before you do any of these techniques, making sure to capture enough of the tail to make your song sound natural when it ends and enough of the intro to get all of that. So the first thing you need to figure out is what type of stems are being requested. Everybody has a different definition, but I think in my view, the most traditional definition of stems is basically your bus track. So your keyboard bus, your guitar bus, your vocal bus, your drum bus, your bass bus. So to get to this right, you pretty much need to organize your sessions with buses. That will make this so much easier. So let's just solo these, and this should pretty much be the whole track except for the effects, which... Sometimes people want the send effects and sometimes they don't. So that's something you need to clarify. But let's listen just with these solo. To do the traditional version of exporting stems, usually what that means is, for example, you've got all of the component tracks for the drums, right? So that my overheads, kicks, snares, they're all going to the drum bus. All of my different guitars are being routed into my guitar bus, etc. So each of those channels are going to have all of their individual insert effects on, right? My kick has a compressor and an EQ, a tape processing, you know, there's all of that on my individual channels. And then I also have all this bus processing on my drum bus. Things you need to clarify when you export stems is whether they want the insert effects on, whether they want the bus effects on. I'm going to assume that they want all of it on, because that's often what they want. But they often don't want the send effects. Sometimes they do. So what I like to do is also take all of my effects and route them to a new bus, which we could just call the effects bus. And then we would solo that because if you don't export your send effects, basically let's mute this and listen to the song with and without. So this song, the effects are adding quite a bit, not as much as in other songs, but enough that you would really miss it if they were gone. So you want to be sure that you're also bouncing your effects buses. Now, you don't have to put these in individual solo mode to export stems in Logic. I'll turn it off. Instead, what you want to do, if your goal to export stems is to do these buses, is you click on each one of them and you can hold down the command key and select all your buses. If you try and export them right now, it is not going to work because a bus isn't a track in Logic's view. And so they can't be moved around or exported or have anything done to them until you right click on them and say, create track. Now you can notice everything kind of moves around a bit. But if we go now to the uh, the sequencer, you can now see that there actually are tracks for each of these buses. And this is also, you could create bus automation in Logic. So now that we've got these tracks created, let's select them again. And now we can go to 
file, export, five tracks as audio files. Click on this or command E, and I really love that there's actually hotkeys for all of this. And what you wanna do now that you've, we've already ensured that we've got the right selection. So we're gonna trim silence at the end. Wave is usually the format you want, but be sure to confirm that the bit depth, be sure to confirm that too with whoever is requesting it. If you're using this method, you need to know whether or not they want the effects plugins in. Um, so you can bypass them automatically with this, which would just be on the buses or keep them on. You can have the option of letting logic determine where the audio tail is. I find that this is not really efficient because sometimes it detects uh, audio tail that goes on forever and ever, which takes a really long time to bounce. So I just like to manually figure it out and then add another bar and then trim the silence at the end. Also, generally, you're going to want to include volume and pan automation because this is really important stuff. Like, are your channels panning? Are they, is the volume coming up and down? This is really important to include usually. But sometimes, like if you're sending it to a mix engineer, for example, and they're going to be doing a mix from scratch, maybe you don't want to include that. Um, for normalize, overload protection only or even off, you definitely do not want to be normalizing your stems. And then you have some options here on how you export it. So um, right now, we've just got it to have the track name. And then you could add something custom like, you know, your name so that the whoever is using your stems would know who to attribute to. So that's the first most traditional way of doing stems in Logic. The second way of doing stems is sometimes when people say they want stems, they really just mean they want every single track individually bounced and rendered. I've seen this a lot of times. So that they can create their own mix or their own remix. Sometimes music libraries want this. Sometimes I want a hybrid of what I just showed you. So I want to show you kind of the three main ways of doing it in Logic, and then you can kind of fill in the blanks on your own there. The next one would be, we don't need to select anything or do anything special. We can go export, select all tracks as audio files. So again, certain things aren't tracks. So for example, your send effects here are not tracks. So you would have to create Use the same method we did earlier to create them as tracks if you wanted to capture them as well in this methodology. But if you do that, the send effect would just be... So it would be everything going into that stem, not just processing the stem or the send. It would be everything going into that send, not just the processing of that send on each individual instrument. So this is keeping the send effect separate from the main effect. For all of these methods, for, or for the first two methods, I should say, your master bus processing doesn't matter because it's pulling directly from the channels. So you don't need to worry about your master bus for these two methods. So you just would go export, which is also shift command E, and then it's the same setup as last time, this really powerful tool. Again, you gotta figure out what they want do they want, you know, volume and pan and automation? I would assume so. Do they want the effects plugins on or off? Um, and sometimes, like, if you have a multiple contact instruments in one contact player, you have the option of one file per track, one file per channel strip, one file per instrument, which sometimes I would care about. But I think you can usually, well, sometimes you can crunch that down and sometimes you can't. That's all going to depend on what they ask for. Finally, the last way to export stems, which is the most annoying way to export stems, but sometimes it's what people want. One of the li libraries I work with definitely likes it this way. So this is to export your stems with the send effects rendered on to the stems. So if you conceive of how things flow, right? All of my drums, oops. All of my drums here, some of them actually are go flowing both to a send effect and to my drum bus. Then my drum bus here is also flowing to send effects. 
and then all of that flows out the master bus. So how do I capture that by rendering it? Unfortunately, the only way to do this is to solo the drum bus. This will keep all of the send effects still active, but all of the send effects are going out the master bus as is the drum. So let's just listen real quickly. So if they want the send effects rendered onto my drum bus, what I need to do is bounce my entire mix. But usually they don't want any master bus processing. So you've got to turn off everything on your master bus, hit this bounce button, or it's also, you can select it by going to bounce project or selection, or I like to just do command B. Here again, you get to choose the format, the sample rate, um, dithering, things like that. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to render the entire project, but because you only have the drums soloed and their effects naturally automatically carry through, you'll be getting the entire drum track. But then you have to solo the vocal channel and do this all over again. And then you have to do the keys track and do it all over again, and then do the guitar track all over again. You don't have to do the effects bus separately though, because that will already be baked in to these individual channels, but this is a pretty time consuming process. If you know a better way of doing this, please do let me know. Uh, but I don't think there is in logic. I think other DAWs can do this. So here you have it. These are the three main ways to export stems in logic. Whatever you do, be sure to ask what people are looking for so that you can provide it. And then by combining these three methods, you should be able to get them what they're looking for. I really hope you enjoyed this. Be sure to check out that free music licensing crash course so you can start making money from your music. And be sure to watch this next video because I think you'll really dig it. Bye.